Good Monday morning, Mana Gatherers. We are in the first week of Advent, which is the new year on our church calendars, and it is also the season of preparation for the coming Christ, both on Christmas Day, but also Christ's promised second coming. One tradition of the church during the season is lighting candles on an Advent wreath. Every Sunday we do this here at Union, taking us closer and closer and closer to the light of the world, both in Bethlehem and at the end of the age. This year at Union, our um, Sunday Advent wreath readings are guided by the whole Christmas story, not just Luke 2, but the whole Christmas story, using people of the story to guide us on our journey to the manger. So this week we will use the same reading that we use on Sunday morning when we lit the Advent wreath to guide our morning manna. This week we are with Mary and Joseph journeying with them, who obviously had a pretty significant role in the coming of the Christ child. Both Mary and Joseph had visits from an angel who called them to step out in faith to serve God in a pretty big and major way, but a way that would have been absolutely, I think, terrifying, difficult, and ostracizing in many, many, many ways ways. But nevertheless, knowing all of that, that it would be difficult and terrifying and ostracizing and not knowing a whole bunch of the other details because they weren't exactly given a plan of how to be Mary and Joseph, how to be the father and mother of God. Um, Mary and Joseph, still, they walked by faith to do their part in sharing the light of the world. So this morning, our scripture reading comes from just um, various verses in Luke 1, mainly hearing from Mary in her song of praise known to us as the Magnificat. So hear Mary, here I am a servant of the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord and my, uh, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. God's mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things. And so here we are, man of people, to receive God's good things, good stuff for us this day. I was thinking about all this, um, reflecting on the scripture as well as my time this past Thanksgiving with my family. I saw something that I had never really noticed ever before in the 10 years Hiram has been part of my family. My engineer husband Hiram and my sisters have a lot in common. They are all super planners. They love and often live by very carefully thought out and very well organized checklists. Before we took our camper vacay, for example, this past Thanksgiving to the urban forest of my sister's driveway in the big metropolis of Atlanta, he, Hiram, wanted to have all the plans complete laid out before leaving, before acting. All the who, what, when, where, why answered, and he was a little dismayed and had to go back to work because he left his list, his checklist, and his plans at work. I can be that way sometimes. Here at work at the church, I do have to be that way. But mostly I am a person who acts and plans in tandem at the same time. To use an engineering phrase I've learned from my husband, I build design rather than design build. I just have a feeling that yeah, everything will work out as we go along. So maybe that is one of the many reasons that Harm and I were brought together, that we complement each other in this way. He's a planner in very, very detailed way, and I'm not so much. Anyways, I think that this build design ex uh, existence, which is me, build design existence, comes in, a in useful as a person of faith. Because as my seminary professor said my very first year, one of my seminary professors said my first year, if you aren't okay with mystery, then you will find it have a very hard time being Christian, but especially being a, liter a leader in the Christian faith. There is a lot of mystery, wouldn't you agree, to our faith. And God often calls us to step out in faith without having everything neatly packaged or organized, without a complete guided travel plan. There are so many biblical stories of such walking by faith and not by sight. But this time of year, 
I, of course, think about Mary and Joseph. They had to be people who were simply okay with mystery, okay with the unknowns, not knowing the whole picture before taking a huge leap of faith with God. What it boils down to is that they trusted God. They trusted God to work out the details, to be in the details. All God needed them to do was to respond to God's call with faith. Not by sight, not with a pre-travel checklist, not with an itinerary of where they would be every year following the birth of God, not with a concordance and commentary in hand explaining it all. Without all that, we see in Mary and Joseph's story that God provided and God protected and God gave them peace along the way that they were headed in the right direction. Not everything was perfect. There were bumps in the road, but God gave them a peace and a joy. God also gave them the strength of heart and soul to bear all the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mary and Joseph said yes to God. Yes to God, knowing perfectly well that they were called, but knowing they didn't have to have all the who, what, when, where, why, answered or figured out to step out in faith with God. They leapt. And because of their leap into the unknown, into the mystery, the world was completely changed because of their response to act in faith. May each of us learn to have such faith in God, especially when God calls us to partner with God in building the kingdom of heaven in this world. I will see you tomorrow, this first week of Advent.